Yeah, Holy Spirit just gave me that scripture that says, do not grow weary in well-doing. Do not grow weary in well-doing. For you will surely reap if you do not lose heart. Yeah. You know, when I saw this picture of, you know, those of us, those of you who have been out there and you have just been feeling like you have been pummeled by wave after wave after wave as you have been in this place of like so diligently aligning yourself to the best of your ability with the path that God had showed you to move forward. And it's like, I can just see that there has been a weariness you know, and this is all why we need this word, do not grow weary in well-doing. Because there has been a weariness that has come in in the waiting and where, you know, where there's almost been like an exhaustion that's come to try and to sap our energy and sap our, and it does that by sapping our hope and our joy. But this is a time, you know, so we have been out there and it's like I saw this picture of, you know, uh, people out there and going and going after going after the next wave going after the next thing going after that which god had called them to you know and so it's like but we're also in this position where you know god is not giving um individual people all the pieces of the puzzle it says in the bible that we see in part we know in part and, you know, and there's been a frustration that has come to a lot of us because we're such like go-getters and we want to like go after the things that we feel God is showing us. But there is this needfulness um, of community and of connection. And so there has been like where God has given us certain pieces and certain elements and certain strategies and directions, but he has very um, intentionally withhold, withheld bits of strategy, bits of information bits of like connecting pieces so to speak and it's actually not been to frustrate us though that has been the case for some of us but it has actually been to force us to press in and to remain in connection and in community and so you know there is this place you know and so how many of you guys hello Irene Dina Dina Jill you know how many of you have just felt like you can feel like you're just you're riding the waves you're just in this place and it's like the surfers who are, who are out in the ocean and and it's you know out in the ocean waiting to catch that wave waiting for the one that is going to come and and you're going to be able to ride you know and so but the weariness has come in because there's so much energy that has been expended and getting us out into the deep places. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you that just because you are not finding yourself yet in the place of riding the wave as you thought you would by this point, that, that God sees and God knows and he sees that you have, you know, you have walked that walk of obedience and you have gone out, you have swam out to the deep places you've gone deeper and deeper and it's like i see you know i see you treading water and and you're in this place where it's just like you've been treading you've been like just swimming and swimming and swimming and you've gone out you've gone past the place where you can touch the ground and you're in this place where you need god to show up because it's like you know in some ways it's like you know how elisha got he elisha when he was called by elijah he he broke he burnt the plow killed the oxen and he 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 turned and he went he left it all behind he he took a step of faith and he went out and he made decisions in such a way that he couldn't turn back and so many of you have done the same thing where you have you know you have burnt the oxen so to speak and you've gone out into the deep places with God and you have gone into depths that you had not ever gone to before and so you find yourself in this place of waiting and you're in this place of waiting and it seems and it seems like the sun has gone down the sun has gone down and you've been waiting and treading water and you have just been waiting and you have just been waiting and there's been waves that have come i see that there's waves that have come and you know some of us thought like okay I'm, i think this is the wave i can see where you looked at you looked on the horizon you thought okay this one looks like it might be the one but when you made attempts to step out into it you just found yourself kind of like pummeled and knocked over and i just see that the lord says that 
you know, this is part of the reason why it, who we are connected to and linked with in this season is so important because when we are out in the deep places with God and when we are going after, when we get ourselves into that place where it is literally, it is, you know, live or die, sink or swim, we can't do it on our own and we and 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 not even just us and god but it is those people around us and so because what happens when these waves and and these waves and these disappointments and these disillusionments and these things where we step out into the faith and we find it like crashing over us and we find ourselves all of a sudden there is a disorientation that comes when you try something and it doesn't work when you step out you know, and then you find that, you know, maybe you were wrongly, re, you were, maybe you were wrongly aligned. Maybe there was betrayal. Maybe there was disappointment. Maybe, you know, you know, sometimes we step out into things because the motives of our heart aren't quite right. And so, you know, maybe, um, I can see where some, where it was actually a chasing of, of, of the um, affirmation and of the going through doors that were open because of favor, but they weren't actually the doors that God wanted you to walk through or the timing wasn't right. And so there has been the disorientation that has come with disappointment and hope deferred. And so the Lord says that this is a time, this is a time where um, we we can't fully re- trust and rely on our own our own sense of balance and our own sense of like where we should be, but we really need to be linked with, with, with wise counsel and with mentors. And I just see the Lord showing up in a, you know, in in just a new way in this season. And so it's like, I can see those of you, you know, you are in that place who let me know, like, yes, some of you guys are saying yes. Amen. Like you, you know what it's like to be in that place of disappointment, in that place where the things that you thought were going to turn out a certain way have not. And they seem to have, you know, it's like the boat has capsized, so to speak. But the Lord is saying to you, do not lose heart. Do not lose heart. Because you're in a place and you've gone out so deep, you've gone to the places that he's called you. And it's like you have two responses to the circumstances and the situations and the disappointments. And one response is faith and the other one is fear. And so God says we must have faith in the promises of who he is, the promises of his character, just faith in his faithfulness and that what he says that he he never changes, that even though what he has asked you to do in this season may be different than what he asked you to do in another season, he says, just because I change my mind does not mean that I change my character and I will always be faithful to you. You know, but if we, so we need to cling to this faith in God. And if we let go, because it's faith or fear, it's faith or fear and it's life or death over destiny. And so we need to cling to him. Because when you are in the deep places, when you are out into the deep, deep waters with God, when you go out into the depths, into the places where you cannot touch, partnering with fear can be the death of you. Because the fear that comes in the deep places, in the dark nights of the soul, in those moments of disorientation where it is absolutely necessary that you know which way is up and to be able to keep your head above water. And so, but I see, I see God coming and I see he is sending helpers, you know, and I see that it's been such a season. It's been a long season for so many of you guys. And it has just been a really a time of, you know, God took me back to, um, in a bit of a encounter this week. And he took me back to, you know, a time of my life. It was actually nine years ago when I had to have surgery and I had to have surgery because I had cancer. And it was just this time of like, you know, as one of the scariest things that, um, I can remember in my adulthood, you know, I say, I mean, I've faced lots of scary things, but we'll say in the last, you know, it was nine years ago in the last decade of my life. Like the scariest thing was, you know, that stepping up onto an operating table and just, you know, being completely, 
you know, vulnerable and just, you know, laid bare in front of doctors and nurses and in this place of like, like this is life or death. Like I need help. I need help. I need healing. I need the great, the physician. And for you guys, there are some of us, we have met the great physician in this season and he has been helping us and he has been healing and he has been so tenderly with the surgeon's knife. He has been cutting out and cutting away those things that need to be removed from our lives so that we don't continue on in these cycles that have kept us stuck for years and throughout our life, you know, and so he has been freeing us up you know, but what happens when you find yourself in these places of, you know, where you, so just like having surgery in the natural, God was showing me that when you are in this position of having surgery, even emotionally or spiritually, you are laid bare. You come before him in this place of complete nakedness, vulnerability, where you are opened up and you just say, God, have your way, you know, and it's like, that's what God is asking. God is wanting in this season, he wants our hearts. He wants all of us. He wants every single part of your life. And he is asking for levels of surrender and depths of surrender from his children that we haven't, you know, been used to giving. And it's like, we have done the best that we can to say, God, I'll surrender, I'll surrender, I'll surrender. But it's like in this season, again, he is saying deeper and deeper and deeper. And he has been putting fingers, his finger on areas of our lives. And, you know, guys, I want to say that there are, you know, there are areas of our life, you know, and we, if we are lone rangers, we will be so deceived because any man, any man who isolates himself, and this is in Proverbs, if you isolate yourself, you seek your own desire. And it is just like, it is you know, it is foolishness to, to shut out wisdom of and counsel from mentors and people speaking into you. But there is this needfulness because there, you know, did you ever hear that verse in the Bible where it says that even the elect, you know, if it were possible for the elect to be deceived, that even they could be deceived in this last day. And you know how you, you know, can be sure that you're going to be deceived is by going alone and doing your own thing and shutting out the voices of people in your life. You know, it is not, I mean, Holy Spirit is the comforter, the teacher. We are one with him, but it, it, and yes, it is you and Holy Spirit. He's your lifeline, but you can't just say it is just me and God and only God teaches me because we all need input. We all have blind spots, you know? And so God was showing me that these people, you know, so grab onto the people that God has brought in your life because he showed me that he had sent them as life preservers. He is sending this wisdom and these counselors into your life. And, you know, even just people who, who, who just are able to, to say like, hold your ground or don't move or just wait or be patient or it's time to move, you know, and there's such a needfulness, you know? And so it's like, I saw God, you know, I saw him doing this and I saw him dispatching ones into our life and, and, and we need to embrace them. But I also saw us in this place of, you know, where he has been doing, you know, it, it, he's been doing this deep work that has been like very painful and he has been, you know, rearranging, he has been shifting. It it has been like a surgery. He has been cutting things off. He has been adding new things. In some ways it's almost like a plastic surgery because he has had to do such a transformative work. Some of us, we have felt like we have been completely dismantled and broken down right to nothing But God says that the only reason that I have allowed this deep dismantling is because I had to get to the foundations because I wanted you to have a healthy root system. And so God has dismantled so many things that we built of ourselves or that were built on a wrong foundation or that we had picked up and we had built on someone else's vision, someone else's strategy and structure, but it wasn't what God had had originally designed. And so there is a rebuilding, but he says he has laid us bare. So I just see, I see these smooth and beautiful foundations that have, where the cracks have been sealed and where there has been like, uh, just this, like, I see this smoothness and this sanding and it's like, 
it's been hard. It has been really hard, but God is pleased with, you know, and so there's this settling. He, there's this settling that's needed. He's been settling the deep foundational places because he is going to rebuild. But there is a need for a healing. There is a need for um, there, there is a time. And so he just showed me this time. I didn't like it very much. So when I had surgery, did not enjoy the, um, the weeks after were pretty miserable. The first couple weeks, you know, after having surgery and just, you know, dealing with like staples in my belly and drainage tubes and all these things. And so it's like, I saw this picture and it's like, we're like in that place, you're in this helpless state where, you know, you cannot do the things that you used to do. And, and I can feel the internal frustration of those, you know, those who like myself, we are the go-getters. We are the the pioneers, the trailblazers, we want to run and we want to just take the baton and we want to go fast and furious. We are ready to put the pedal to the metal, but the Lord has pulled us back for a time and a season. He says, I'm not disappointed because you allowed yourself this time to rest and to heal and to recover. And so I just see there is the recovery and there is the rest and then there is the movement that is coming. But this time, there's this time of just precious sitting with him and allowing him to just allow the things to come back together. And I just hear him saying there, we need to be kind to ourselves. We need to be kind to ourselves. We need to be gentle with ourselves. We need to learn to love ourselves well because love is the foundation. The Bible says that, you know, love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, and mind and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Guys, church, there is a revelation that God is wanting to unlock. There is a level of love that so many of us have not been able to grasp. And there's a, there has been a deficit in the way that we have loved the, the, our brothers and sisters in Christ and the orphan sons and daughters. There has been a deficit in our love and how we have reflected the Father's love to them because our own deficit in our own ability to love ourselves. And so this is why the Lord says, you must pull back. You must settle in and you must allow yourself to meet, you know, him, the great physician to come and to heal and to repair and to get you into this place because he is filling. And in this, I just saw, like, I, I saw God coming and I saw, you know, Jesus, even like as a nurse coming to tend to the wounds and the broken places and to help heal, you know? And so just this word is don't resist the process don't resist the process and allow yourself to go through the emotion. Allow yourself to, don't just push it down, but process it and release it. Release the disappointment, release the frustration, release, you know, the, the, the weariness from going and not seeing the results. Release all of that to him and then put off your grave clothes and get ready because he is about to shift you out of your hospital gown into your new clothing, which is your new mantle for the new season. And he is already clothing some of you. He is already clothing some of you. And I see some of you are dressed and you are ready to go. You are going, you are moving, you are running, you have taken the baton, you know, but there are those who are still resisting the process. And so there's this needfulness to lean back into him and to submit yourself to this beautiful process of healing, of restoring. You know what happens if you're not healed and you don't allow that, 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 that wound, that, you know, that scar to heal over and you move prematurely, you just make it worse. You just make it worse and you damage it. And so I just see Jesus so tenderly coming in and washing and loving on. And he says, I will care for all of your needs in this season. He, guys, he sees you. His eyes are on you. His eyes are on you. And he's calling you. Yeah. Yeah, Tracy, fill us up. You know, that he, he, is, he is just there and he's got buckets and he's got pitchers. And I just see he's got fresh 
oil and he's got clean water and clean cloths, just like he washed the feet of the disciples. So it's like I see him coming in that same servant king, servant leader position where he's loving and he's washing. Just as he washed the disciples, so he's coming and he's bathing you and he's washing and he's cleansing you. Some of it is just like a foot washing, but some of you, it is a cleansing. It is a washing from head to no, to head to toe, and it is an anointing with fresh oil. And so whatever he wants to do, yeah, Tamara, he is the humble king, but we need to humble ourselves and allow him to serve us and love on us in this season because it is only in receiving love that you can understand the depths of the love you know of God as it as we receive it and then we can reflect it because we are reflections of him and so let yourself be loved in this season let yourself be loved by God let yourself be loved by the people you know in your life you know stop pushing them away Stop, you know, sometimes there is this self-protective thing or there's like a shame that comes on, you know, when you're in the process of, of pain or healing, you know, and, and it's like you want to just go and you want to do it alone and do it in silence. But God says, no, this is time for family. This is time for community. Let, you know, it's like, let them come, let them see. There is something about, you know, he wants to break off the shame of your nakedness the shame of your nakedness, the shame of vulnerability, this lie that says that I have to present myself as strong and put together to be accepted, to be qualified. He says, no, just come, come and be naked and unashamed, just like Adam and Eve were in the garden with with God before the fall of man, he is calling you. He says, come and be naked and be unashamed. And there is actually this deep level of vulnerability that he is calling his bride to. He says, I will not have a bride. I will not have a bride that is all bound up and covered up, but I want to know her in the depths and the places of intimacy. And so he is saying, I need you to be willing to show your scars and your wounds and to be vulnerable and to be open and to allow people to see what I am doing in you and to not just wait until you have perfected yourself, but to embrace the beauty of the process and to be vulnerable while you're in it. There is something about this because he says, I want to break shame off of my bride. I want to break shame and I am cutting the shame off of my bride, the shame of not knowing who she is, the shame of not knowing that she is beautiful, the shame where the enemy has made you to feel that your nakedness was ugly, but he says, I find you beautiful. I find your scars beautiful and I am so delighted in who you are and the places that you thought were failures and were mistakes and were brokenness in the areas where you fell and where you had to have your bones even reset. I see these deep places of brokenness and pain. He is breaking the shame off of it because he says they were not your failures. And though they caused you pain and turmoil, he says that these are the places where you have gained the most authority because you submitted yourself to my process. And so you are, have gained a level of authority authority and you can step into things in the spirit. And he says, I am making you beautiful again. I am washing you and I am cleansing you, my bride, because you are going to be blameless without blemish and without spot. And this is how he sees us. This is the reality of how we are in Christ. And the part of the ascension of this year is about rising up to that higher position, no longer judging according to the flesh. No longer can we judge according to the flesh. And I just hear this call, you know, it's the, it's to the body of Christ, but especially to the prophets. I hear him say, prophets, you cannot judge anymore according to the flesh, according 
to what your eyes see. And it's kind of like the rebuke that he gave to Samuel when Samuel went to anoint the king after Saul was disqualified and set aside. Samuel went, he called the sons of Jesse's and he saw the one who was tall and was handsome. And he said, surely this must be the one. And God said, do not look at the outward appearance because I look at the heart. I look at the heart and he says, my, my prophets cannot look at the outward appearance anymore and they cannot judge according to the flesh, but they have to be able to look at the heart. And so God is calling us up higher. He's calling us up higher and it's not just about prophesying over other people, but it is what are you prophesying to yourself? What are you speaking over your life? How are you seeing yourself? Because as a man sees, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he and we have to this is what the lane of the foundations bear in this hour was all about because we have to have those solid foundations because as you think in your heart so are you going to be and so God says ascend up to the higher place of my presence and learn to come into a depth of encounter that you have not been in before and the deeper is higher the deeper is wider the deeper is ascending to your ascended place in Christ where he is in this place of perfect victory where the enemy is being made his footstool you are so in Christ and he says you need to come up to this place where you are more than a conqueror in me because it is only from this place of being more than a conqueror that you can accomplish and can I put into your hands he says you need to see yourself as you are you need to have your identity he says, your identity needs to be firm and it needs to be unshakable. And this is why he has allowed the winds and the storms and the waves to come and to beat against you and to blow against you and why you have felt like you have been in the storm and you have been battered and beaten and bruised and you have been so overturned and overlooked and pushed aside and pushed down and skin knees and broken bones and all these things that didn't seem fair and you had to endure them and he says because this process has been for your strengthening I have had to break the bones so that I could reset them and so that they would heal in alignment there is those of you, you have been walking and you have been bow legged and you have been getting by fine. But he says, I am going to break the bowed leg and I am going to put it back together. I am straightening that which was crooked and it has been a painful process. But he says that your light affliction, which is but for a moment is working for you a far more exceeding and eternal weight and glory. And he says, I am changing your appetites in this season. I am changing your appetites in this season. You will not be satisfied with the bread of Egypt like you were in the last season, but I am changing your appetites. And there is a hunger. There is a hunger for that manna, for that bread, for the bread of life that comes only from the heavenly places. But guess what? In this season, the manna is not falling down to us. It is not falling from heaven like it did in the old covenant. But in this, there is a fresh manna and there is a fresh bread, but it is not coming down. It is going up. And so we need to go up. We need to go up and to get it. There is a fresh word and there is a fresh revelation, but we have to come up to the place where that is our, our seated, ascended position in Christ. He says, come up, come up. He says, come up. He says, come up. If you will come up, the healing process will be accelerated. And the more time you spend up here, <clears throat> he says, come into the recovery room of heaven. He says, come into the recovery room of heaven. Come into your place and let me bandage your wounds and let me wash off the dirt in the blood. And as you surrender, and if you will let him take you up into the places of heavenly recovery, 
That's where the acceleration comes. It's where the acceleration comes. He says, go low so I can bring you high. He says, go low so I can bring you high. He says, in humility, I can bring you up. And there's a level, there's a level of humility that is required to put on that, you know, you put on that hospital gown that's like open at the back, you know, and you don't feel very well covered. You know, that's how I felt, you know, I, nine years ago when I was going into that operating room and it was actually this month is, is my nine year anniversary, but it's that, that thing of vulnerability. And he was showing me that this week. There's that thing of vulnerability. We don't get to walk into his operating room, into his place, into his hospital with all our stuff and all our clothes and all our dirt and all our, what you have to do is you have to wash yourself and you have to change your clothes and you have to do exactly what he says to you, just like you do with a doctor. And so there's this needfulness of following, he is the great physician, of following his orders. Of taking, he is writing prescriptions. He says, I'm writing prescriptions. And I see these, I see these prescriptions and I see them, I see them falling down from heaven like pieces of paper. And for those of you, if you feel like you don't know the way forward, you don't know what you're supposed to do in this process, just reach up and take that prescription because the prescription has been written for you and it is being released from heaven, like a scroll from heaven. And you just need to reach up by faith and take it and just say, yes, I will follow your orders. I will obey and I will do exactly what the great physician is required of me in this hour. And some of the prescriptions that he is writing do not make sense. They do not make sense. And some of you are going to find yourself like, I think it was Naaman, Naaman, the, the Naaman who came, he was a commander of an army. Maybe it was the, of the Syrian army. I can't remember, but he came to Elisha. He came and he was a leper. Some of you guys are going to find yourself like Naaman in that place. Where you know you have. And I just, I feel this like. It's like some of us have embraced this spiritual sickness. That's not ours. And it's like, and it's like we think it's just a little eczema, but God is saying, no, it's leprosy. It's leprosy. And so there are things that we have thought were only surface, only skin deep, but he says, I see, and they go deeper. And so there are things that he is going to ask us to do and they require a level of humility like Naaman who had to go and wash himself in the filthy dirty Jordan River seven times he didn't want to do it he didn't like what the prophet asked him to do but there are things and he almost missed it he almost missed it because of his pride and his arrogance and he just wanted the prophet to come out and to give the word and wave his hand and to declare the word and him to be healed and go on his way. But he says, no, you must humble yourself and stoop down and wash yourself in the river Jordan seven times. And so if the Lord is saying, to you, if that prescription that he is releasing to you says you need to bend low, get down in the dirty water and wash and wash. Will you do it? Will you do it? Will you do it? 
Bible says many are called, few are chosen. Many are called, few are chosen. We're all called. So many are called. God is calling. How many of you have a prophetic word, promises? You've been called. You've been given the invitation. You've been given the words of destiny. If you've been tracking with my ministry, if you've gone to my prophecy hour, you know, and I prophesied over you, you know, you have some keys, you have some invitations from God about your destiny. You know, you've had something released to you about what is God's will and intention for your life, but there are callings, there are invitations. There is a responsibility for us to partner, to judge prophecy, but also to partner and mix our faith with it and to step into a place of alignment and not just to sit back and be like, well, God wants it. He'll make it happen. It's not the way it works. Yeah. Yeah. So embrace his process. Embrace his process. He's saying, I'm not going to let you drown. I'm not going to let you drown. No. But don't miss... Don't miss the life preservers and the ones that he has sent. <sighs> yeah. Don't be like Naaman. Don't miss it. God is so kind. He's so kind. And he makes a way. And he makes it possible for each and every one of us to step into our, you know, our prophetic destiny to each and every one of us to live a life of meaningful impact. Every single one of your lives is supposed to be filled with joy and hope and purpose. Despair, depression, lie, they're all lies. They're lies. They're not yours. Yeah, hopelessness. And some of us have been so bombarded with the lies of the enemy because we have been stuck in this second lower realm, second heaven realm. And he says, come up. He says, come up. Come up to the recovery room. Come up to this place. Come up. Yeah. But it takes humility. It takes surrender. And it takes yes. God is going after those last bits of reservation that we have. Those last little bits, you know, even myself, like I, for years, I've been like, I'm all in. I'm all in. I have thought that I was all in. I have thought that I was like fully surrendered. And it's just constantly, God is like, here's another area. Here's another spot. You need to go deeper here. You need to give me this. You need to let go of this. You need to lay down this thing. You need to, you know, and that was another thing that he was showing me. I put it in my, um, just in the reel that I put out this morning, about there are things, this thing of surrender. There is this thing there. It's like the Abraham and Isaac, you know. God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, his son, the son of promise. The child that he had waited his whole life for. The child that was supposed to be the fulfillment of his prophetic destiny. And so there are those of us, we have, he is asking us, he has asked us to lay things down. There are things that I have had to lay down, that I have had to let go with much pain and much grief. And there are things that God put in my hand. There are things that God put in your hand. There are things that were good things. And he has said, you know, they were in the last season and he had said, lay it down. And so there was just this, and, and it's like, that's what some of the confusion in, of the season is like, you know, because we've had to lay down these things that were good and these things that we knew were from God. And and this is a test of faith. 
Because if you knew something wasn't of God, it would be a whole lot easier to let go. But he says, lay them down. Whether it is, a, you know, a, a business, a relationship, um, something else that you've been aspiring to. He's saying, lay it down. You need to lay it down and you need to take your hands so far away from it. And he says, I will decide what you pick up. And so there are things, there are things that took, it took every ounce of strength for you to let go. Every ounce of strength for you to let go, to put it at the cross, to put it on the altar. You, you know, I can feel, I can feel the pain of it. I can feel the sacrifice, but it was an act. It was an offering of surrender to him. And there are things that you let go and you're just in this place of waiting. Some of those things, some of you will be surprised because it was so hard for you to let go. It was so hard for you to finally get it out of your heart, to get it so that it was not, that there wasn't an ungodly attachment, that it was no longer uh, an, uh, something that you, that you felt you had to have and it took so long to get it out of your heart that you were just ready to be. You gave it over to him at the cross. You surrendered and it's fully, you fully gave it to him and you don't even want it back because it was so hard to give over. And he says, well done. He says, well done for giving it over. And there are some of you who are going to find that just like Isaac, it's given back to you. And some of you will be confused because you won't want it back because it was so hard to let go of. But now he says, you can have it because I know that it will not have you. He says, you can have it because it will not have you. And some of it was just about the purifying of motives and of connections and making sure that the good thing that God gave you did not become an idol. But then there are some of those things that will not be picked back up again. God is removing them out of the way. He is locking the door. And it will not come back. But he says, there is nothing there is nothing that you can sacrifice, that you can give, that you can walk away from, that I will not restore, multiply back, and give to you better. Yeah. 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 Either way, you win. You win. You win. Go low. Surrender. Find your safe place of vulnerability where you can be naked and unashamed, where you can find that place and you can find those people. God is bringing people into your life. There is a needfulness of community and connection. You cannot be alone and fulfill your destiny. Yeah, your destiny involves people. Yeah. Wow, I just I feel such a sweet, sweet peace of the Lord. Just such a sweet, sweet peace of the Lord. Yeah. And I just release that to, to you guys. Just take it. Just, just drink him in. Just drink them in. And if you're coming in late, please go back when I'm done and listen to the beginning of this word. 
because it's a good word. It's just flowing from there out. There's such a sweet peace. So I just release the peace of God. I just release the peace of God over you. And there is an out of this world, heavenly peace that is coming. Just feel it. it's coming in waves. It's coming in waves and it's just washing over you. Feel the shift where it was the waves of the confusion, the waves of the disappointment, the waves, it's shifting. The waves that were, were, were pummeling over you, now it's, it's, not, it's not the waves of the torrents of the storms, it's now the waves of the peace. The waves of his peace, there's a deep settling that's coming and his peace is resting on you. Just let it wash over you. 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 I just hear your pride in your dignity. Your pride in your dignity are like heavy weights. They're like heavy weights that will cause you to drown in the deep places. But he is giving you the keys and he says, remove those heavy weights from your ankles so that you can float, that you can rise up. There is a spiritual buoyancy that comes with being in humility and being surrendered. So just receive that peace. The peace is washing over you. It's just washing over you. It's washing off the disappointment. It's washing off the shame. Even right now, there is a freedom. There is a deliverance that the peace is bringing. The peace is just washing. It's like a slick oil that's just being poured over you and it's just running down. It's just running down and those things can't stick to you anymore. And the things that were sticking, they're just, they're just, they're just being washed off. I just see... I see it. It's just, I, I can hear, <laughs> I can hear the sound of the demonic that is being released from you and is being pushed out even now as the waves of peace release a frequency of heaven that's changing the very atmosphere in your room and in your house and there is a heavenly frequency that is going out and it's like rippling out it's rippling rippling out into the atmosphere and it's just pushing out it's pushing out the confusion it's pushing out the exhaustion it's pushing off just i just see a cutting off of where there's been any yeah, anything trying to pull in, yeah, from the outside. And it's just, yeah, who his peace is like, it's like a nuclear bomb. It is like an, a who in the spirit. I just see like, I see like a mushroom cloud of peace. It's like a mushroom cloud of peace. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we're going to sleep well tonight. We are going to sleep so well tonight, guys. <laughs> oh, even I can feel it. Yeah, I can feel it. I can feel it. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I, you know, I just, I didn't want to break my flow. So I'm just going to stop and say hello to some of you guys. You guys have been tracking with me, a lot of you this whole time. Dina, Dina, Peta, Grace, Eniton, hello. Gloria, Norija, we got Puerto Rico. We got some from the UK. Brenda from Muskoka, Cherie Gaither, Irene Grekoff. I think Irene's in Alaska. Uh, who else do we have on here? I know Tracy McDonald. I saw her earlier. Sharon McGuire. Hello. Christy Medeiros. Good to see you. Beautiful lady. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, I just wanted to mention uh, one thing before I sign off is um, my, I, 
updated my website. So my Emerging Profits Ontario website. So what I've done, um, I had the lovely Kayla Lopez, Lopez, who is my website designer. She added a page onto my Emerging Profits Ontario website for my mentorship program. Because, you know, um, it's just an easier way for people to connect with me. So just check it out. EmergingProfitsOntario.com slash mentorship. So there are two options for joining the mentorship program people. So unlike the school, which has an official start date, like we started January 11th, and I already believe that year, my year two is going to be starting October 10th is my expected start date for year two. So for those ones, you have to you know, know the admission day for the Ontario school. But for the mentorship program, people are always coming in and out, constantly coming in, doing six months, doing a year. If you are hungry for the prophetic, if you want to be part of a prophetic community, the prophetic mentorship group is not just for people who feel they're called to the office of the prophet, because the gift of prophecy is for the entire entirety of the body of Christ. All of us, if you have Holy Spirit, you can prophesy. And it's Joel, Joel 2 talks about God pouring his spirit out on all flesh and the sons and daughters prophesying. And prophecy is not just about giving words. You know, it's not just about prophesying like I did this evening even, though that's a great part of it. But it is about a divine connection. It is about intimacy with God. And it is about being someone who is connected to his presence and just having that free flow of the Holy Spirit. So if you are, if you are not prophetic at all, if you don't have never prophesied and you don't feel like you're prophetic, this is the perfect group for you. If you feel like you're highly prophetic, but you're just not connected to prophetic church or have had any mentorship, this is a great group for you. If you feel like you're spiritually gifted, you get dreams and visions, you feel things, maybe you've labeled yourself as an empath because you feel people's emotions, you are a highly prophetic person. And this class would be perfect for you. So, you know, if you're tracking with me, you're resonating with me, I would love to be have the honor and privilege of speaking into your life and mentoring you as part of this mentorship group. But you have to, you know, realize the value in it and the value of investing in yourself because there is a cost to it. So you, I've, I've switched it now. You can sign up for either six months or 12 months. And if you choose the 12 month option, there is a pretty big discount. So check it out, emergingprofitsontario.com slash mentorship. And for those of you who are natural health inclined and uh, or those of you who are my um, doTERRA essential oil customers, just want to give you the heads up that BOGOs start on Monday. And if you don't know about essential oils and would like to understand what is with the craze, connect with me. I'd love to meet with you for FaceTime for 15, 20 minutes and just talk to you about how amazing, you know, these natural health products are. Revelation 22, 2. Interestingly, it is the verse for my essential oil business. The leaves of the tree are for healing. But Revelation 22, 2 is also the verse that is prophesied over Canada because Canada is the nation with a leaf on its flag. The leaves of the tree are for healing. So I just, I love this connection, this like congruency. So anyway, love essential oils. If you're not um, already a doTERRA customer, you need to become one and you might as well let me serve you as a wellness advocate. But yeah, so Vogos are coming and uh, love you guys. Thanks for listening. Have a great night.